been an interesting controversy happening on the sneakers space, especially on Twitter. Something that I've only recently discovered rec of, of recent years and stuff because of the, you know, forums essentially dying and there'd be no other place to sort of discuss sneakers in a somewhat, you know, sensible manner uh, outside of Reddit, which I think Reddit isn't really the best base for it either. There's a few, there's too many donuts on there. Um, but I really do miss places like Crooked Tongues um, to kind of discuss sneakers and shit. So I'm happy to replace it with Twitter. And unfortunately, Twitter is mostly US or the people that I follow are mostly in, in America. And I feel like the American sneakerheads on Twitter are so corny, so cringy. It's kind of really hard to kind of get into the weeds of some of the stuff they're talking about. But hey, make do with what's available. So the thing I'm talking about is the cactus plant flower, the cactus plant flea market and um, fl air flea twos that came out recently. I covered them already on the on the pod. I spoke about how much I love them. They've dropped already in the US. I'm not too sure when they're going to drop here in the UK. Um, if I'm not mistaken, the retail in the US was around two hundred twenty dollars, and it's nice to see that the price of them now, as as I'm checking them um, StockX now, the last sale um, of a pair was 288 pounds. Um, so you can already see that the resale on these hasn't been as great as some of the resellers probably would have hoped it would have been. So if I want a pair in my size, I could actually get them for a decent enough price. Like a US 11 here um, is listed at 347 pounds, which isn't too bad when you consider that a retail in the UK will probably be about what the retail was in the US, maybe 220 maybe 250 um depending so it's not that bad um when it comes to the pricing but the interesting thing about the cactus plant um flea market air flea twos isn't the pricing on StockX has been the controversy surrounding the sizing so if you type in flea two sizing on twitter or any other social media space you use i'm sure you'll see a bunch of people talking about the issues they have with sizing one guy here um on the twitter search that i've got here from um, twitter that says i watched five videos of the cactus plant flea market flea two and they all said something different about the sizing do we actually know what our real shoe size is to even judge these shoes some say too big some say too small some say true to size so the basic issue going on is that for some reason early pairs of the air flea 2 were sized incorrectly according to what's going on online so people were buying early pairs of the air, their flea 2 before they dropped before they were released and they were buying let's say a size 11 a us 11 and they were matching it up to a us 11 air force or whatever shoe they have in their collection and they were noticing that the us 11 in the flea 2s was way bigger in terms of length long wide whatever than their Air Force One in the exact same size. So maybe people will start thinking, like, what's going on with the sizing? Do you have to size down? Then there were stories of people essentially buying the Air Fleet 2s and having to size two whole sizes down to make them fit. Two whole sizes make them fit. So if you were like a US 11, you have to buy like a, what? Like a US 9 or something to make these fucking work for you, which is absolutely crazy. Um, but there's another theory going around here. And this theory is courtesy of the one and only Sock Jig. So big up Sock Jig. Got one of the best sneaker podcasts out there, um, you know, that's ever fucking existed. So definitely check out um, Sock Jig Sneaker Podcast if you're a fan of sneaker podcasts that aren't the cringy, corny, complex nonsense. But he made a really interesting point the other day. He said... Um, regarding the cactus plant flea market flea two sizing thing i can't find any logical explanation for it so i just assumed those pairs were fake allegedly i honestly don't care enough to start a war about it just to post memes about it i don't know where they came from or who was the source maybe the rail car with fakes was raided instead of the rail car with retail pairs so there's a whole entire world now that exists which i'm discovering now of these sort of like sneaker reseller type people online, one of them being that master chef guy, people are alleging we used to sell fakes in the background, who somehow have a connection with the factories in China and they're able to get early samples of hyped shoes made or delivered to them before they even dropped retail. So what happens with that is that it causes confusion because if you're not familiar with how sneakers come out in the past anyway with fakes, what would originally come out with fakes would be like, if like a Travis Scott Jordan came out, the fakes of them would come out far later. So what you do if you're waiting to make sure you bought legit pair was to make sure you bought your pair 
legitimately through obviously Nike sneakers app if you could or try your best to buy them within the first couple of days of them dropping because all the shoes in circulation at that time would most likely be real and you could obviously be calm and be you know rest easy in the fact that you bought a real pair but nowadays because the fake market and the replica market is so big now in part due to Nike and their inability to just give people what they want because I feel like this kind of artificial scarcity this inability to just make more shoes for people and satisfy demand has weirdly enough created a secondary market of fakes that exist so now people are proactively getting or bugging factories or working out plans with factories. i've seen people do this even with certain levels of jordans and working out agreements where they can get the factories to make stuff ahead of time before it drops retail so people can get it and maybe you know do some quality control and you know fine tune some details that they're not really fond of or what things that they want to kind of add to it or just get their hands on them early so the one that happening if you get your hands on those fakes early before the retails drop you can then flood the market with some fakes they can get mixed up with the real and it's harder to spot and that stuff can end up on StockX. people can make a good lick and then kind of ride off into the sunset and of course the customers themselves are the one that worry but when it comes to these flea twos it seems like the unique nature in which these shoes were made right the fact that they're a little bit you know all over the place in terms of design and shit has weirdly enough led to this weird sizing issue because if you look at the shoe itself you're not looking at it here but essentially what it has it has this really strange um kind of outsole where it's really big it's much bigger than the actual shoe um footbed so it kind of reminds me a little bit recently of a shoe that dropped um the balenciaga i think i think it's a tyrex boot right it's a balenciaga sneaker that looks like it's, a, it's got like a tire wrapped around it and if you actually look at the shoe footbed if you're actually looking down um as you're wearing the shoe you'll notice that the actual rubberized side of it where the tire is is a lot more thicker and, and protruding on the outside of the actual shoe itself so it can actually look a bit bigger than what it is again similar to the triple s where the sole's really large and the actual footbed itself of the shoe is fairly small and if you actually look at the triple s actually if you actually look at it from the side profile you'll notice that it's a bit more of a triangle shape so all of this is the the bottom bit is where the triple soles are and then the top is where the actual sneak itself is so it gives this weird illusion so for some reason i guess the rep factory might have got thrown off by the weird shape of these flea twos and how they've got this really um you know pronounced exaggerated over you know ex you know over whatever fucking rubberized outsole that goes into the shoe so maybe when they were making the reps they incorrectly made them the wrong size or when they got the samples made they only had a really big size to kind of go off of. And that maybe fucked up the sizing when they eventually put it, which has happened before. I've seen people complain about rep sizing all the time. So I guess it is a bit of an issue sometimes. It can happen from time to time. So I think that might have been an issue that occurred. But this is an interesting problem that we're having now, right? Where we're having these guys and girls who kind of credit themselves on selling very rare and expensive very rare limited edition shoes for incredible incredible amounts of money and usually they are bona fide guarantees in terms of getting real stuff because they usually deal with like you know pigeon dunks and flom dunks and what the dunks all this sort of like high level fucking big boy sneaker shit that it would make no sense why they'd be trying to sell or resell fakes of like $300 sneakers where they can make so much on the other stuff. But if you think about it again, there are probably way more people able to spend $300 than they are going to be able to spend a thousand, 20,000, 30,000, whatever hype shit he's got. So it does make a lot more sense. But let's play some videos so I can show you what the current vibe is saying with a lot of these people when it comes to um, putting out this sort of like fake narrative that these shoes are made weird and that's why you have to size or size down two sizes or whatever so I'm not too sure where I stand on it but the more evidence I've seen the more I'm starting to believe that most likely you can get them true to size you don't have to you know if you're a size length you have to get a nine but they are maybe come up a bit roomier um, and they obviously sometimes look a little bit more gargantuan when you put them on your actual foot because of the whole you know exaggerated nature of the shoe design so let's actually see one clip here courtesy of Marta Chef, which is uh titled the flea sizing update still big as hell let's see what he's saying here because i feel like this debate is going to wrangle on and on and on and on and on all right this is a ten and a half guys box pair now ten and a half scott what size do you have on foot uh i have a size eight and i wear a size nine and a half all right so I actually wear nine and a half ten right this is a ten and a half guys Y'all, see my other shoe? This is a 
13. For everybody that's saying these run true to size, this is a 10 and a half. 13. Eight. Eight. Nine and a half. Nine and a half, Nine all right? 10. This is on my foot. My toe is right here. 10 and a half. Look, I'm gonna take this shoe off now. Take the shoe off. This is a 10 and a half. All right, this is an 11. I'm about to bust this open. This is a size 11 dunk. It's a size 11 dunk. I can't even get my foot in it. Mm -hmm. Size 11 dunk. 10 and a half, size 13. <laughs> Eight? Nine and a half, but I wear a 10 as well. So so I don't know who to believe. I really don't know who to believe in this respect, but I'm starting to lean more to the side of what Sockjig is saying in terms of maybe some of these reseller guys are dabbling in the dark arts of fucking reps. But maybe it's getting so crazy now where technically they're not reps, they're sort of like early samples because something that's really kind of thrown me off is the fact that Nike haven't come out and cleared up anything. So likely this is not an issue on Nike's end. And most likely all the legit pairs, all the pairs that they're selling through their official retail partners or accounts, whatever it may be, they've not really had an issue. But I think these consortium concession type of flight club-esque reseller type that guys they're the ones that are having more issues than regular people so let's see another video here courtesy of Marta chef titled testing and let's see what else he's saying here regarding this sort of stuff and again i'm not really too sure where i stand on this stuff but it's fascinating to kind of watch this all play out in real time you wear a lot of sbs wear a lot of sbs what size do you wear in sbs uh nine and a half ten how does that fit right off that kind of just slipped on honestly no sliding around okay yeah there's probably like they have to be worn with a swoosh, by the way. There's a kid wearing them, obviously testing them around, seeing what they look like. But they have to be worn with that swoosh. And I love how cartoony the swoosh is too. How it's sort of like janky, almost wobbly looking. I actually love that. A little bit more. Just so that you know, that's a size nine, and you're a true size ten. D threes are ten. 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 Okay. Oh yeah, this is it. Now off the rip, how's that feel? Tighten it down. Yeah, lock it down. My toe's right at the top. Okay. Yeah. Oh yeah. That's you? That was a nine. So that was a full size down. That's crazy. I'm gonna true eleven and a half. Okay. You're a true eleven and a half. This feels like an eleven and a half. Is that what you would get? This is the size you This would be that this would be the size I wanted. Now I know. Okay. Now Hold I know on. I need a I'm not telling you yet, because now you're Why do all US sneakerheads they have this archetype that exists, this like obese fucking sneakerhead guy they, they all exist I've, i think the other one is like mr what's that that major guy from new york that always buys air force ones and shit and thinks he's some sort of trap god with it there's this persona this personality of person where they're just incredibly fat but they're into fucking sneakers and shit what's the point they look all they all look terrible on you you look like you're there your feet are about to fucking explode through the fucking lever and a suede what's the point of looking this size or being this size and also, you know, owning some of these most coveted, beautiful sneakers in, you know, in sneaker fucking history. You're better off dropping 10 pounds and wearing a couple of Payless shoes, I would reckon. But again, maybe I don't know what I'm talking about. You're about to try the next okay. one. Okay, we'll try the next one? Yeah. All right, let's do it. I already see your foot. I'm wobbling about. Are you wobbling about? Yeah. Like you, wouldn't, you wouldn't prefer that to be in the size you want No, I, I would not want this. You guys okay. down. That's an 11 and a half. This is an 11 and a half? The shoe you just tried on is 10 and a half. The one before. Isn't that crazy? Really? Yes. So at the internet, Twitter, yeah. is telling us that these fit true to size. This is not not true to size. It's a lie. You heard it here first. So it's a lie. You heard it here first. It's not fit true to size. But it's this other guy who said they do fit true to size, who I'm going to show you here, which is this one here called um, Don't Believe the Hype. Um, the CPFM sizing is correct. So I don't know who to believe, really. My mind's all over the place. But so far, I've seen a couple people on my Twitter as well who I replied to who basically said it fits true to size. If anything, they maybe size down half a size. But the whole idea behind sizing two whole sizes is completely incorrect. So let's see this video too from this guy here these shoes so we'll see how they fit problem is is that these look like they'd be huge like these are a size not my true size they look like they're gonna be giant they're actually i say true to size i really thought they'd be way bigger are they comfy they're not bad if you're grabbing these i'd say go true to size it seems like that is exactly what they fit like they look very very marmite on feet don't they it's a very unique type of shoe to kind of be into so I'm not surprised. Maybe that's why that might play into the fact that the retail, um, sorry, the resale price isn't as crazy probably as it should be. 
because as as a cactus plant flea market Nike collab goes, they're going. I like how every shoe they're getting progressively more weirder, right? They're going into the more eclectic, kitschy type of vibe of things. So they're kind of challenging the 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 wearer and the buyer of their shoes more than beforehand, because these are way harder to wear than anything else they've probably put out before. Let's continue. I thought they were gonna fit like three sizes too small, too big. I thought if you grabbed a size nine, it would fit like a size 10 and a half. That's what mm. I was thinking, but it doesn't fit like that at all. It fits like a size nine. I'm really impressed. And it's not crazy uncomfortable. Okay, that, that's one person's review. And then the last one is this person also called Release Expert that kind of went to clarify some things regarding it as well. So at the moment, I'm leaning towards Sox Jigs theory that a lot of these rep, rep, sorry, a lot of these resellers are selling reps and pretending like they're not selling reps because they're in this weird sort of like gray area where they're getting direct stuff from factories before it drops. Or, or maybe there's a whole new world that kind of revolves around plan, I'm sorry, plan Bs, um, uh, around the uh, tier, what are they called? B B class B grade shoes. Back in the day when we were when I was buying shoes, there was a there was a range called B grades. Well, not range, but basically where if the factory made a shoe and they made a mistake with them, that's that's what a B grade was. So maybe they did the wrong stitch or they put a wrong color on the upper or whatever it may be. So some of those shoes will sometimes flood the market as well. Um, so maybe that is what's happening now. The early stages of sampling. These guys are maybe stepping in and getting those pairs early from the Nike factory, then getting them repped. So essentially it's made from like a real thing and then they're kind of trying to sell them that way. So maybe that's why technically in their head they're thinking they don't have to divulge it because it's technically a real thing. I don't really know, but it's definitely something dodgy going on here. But anyway, let's see Reese Expert basically clear up the whole issue with these shoes and hopefully now this puts the whole issue to bed. You'd hope so. For everybody that's saying these run true to size, this is a 10 and a half, 13, 8, Eight. Nine and a half. Nine and a half, Nine all right? Ten. This is on my foot. My toe is right here. Okay, he's pulling them out. So I can pair some of the US 11700 so these V2. CTFMs cool. really remind me of the Balenciaga triple S's. Where the oh, you see? That's what I said earlier about the triple S's. See? There we go. The outsole and the sole of the shoe is extremely large, larger than the actual base of the shoe. Uh -huh. Now, in this case, when I tried them on, it honestly fit pretty true to size. Uh -huh. I know it looks pretty big on my foot, and it's because that outsole extends further out than the actual shoe. Exactly. So the, the the probably shoe itself, the footbed, is probably somewhere around here. It probably stops around somewhere here and it stops around somewhere out here too. But all of this other stuff is just the extra, you know, material and bits and bobs that kind of have make it have this exaggerated, almost bulbous look. But the actual footbed is somewhat smaller. It's obviously true to size, clearly. True. But trying them on, you can see that's where my toe is. I have no space in my heel. But yeah, definitely a shoe that's true to size. Uh, you heard it here first. But what do you guys think about this shoe? Let me know in the comment section below. Is this so yeah, a lot of controversy going on around that cactus plant flea market shoe. Um, I can't wait to get it when it does officially does drop in the UK. The flea two is available now at StockX and other resale platforms. But be careful where you're purchasing it from because it looks like there's already reps already out there. And the bad thing. I hate about this sort of like scene at the moment with sneakers isn't that people are selling reps buy what you want wear what you want it's more so the the fucking people who are purposely going out of their way to trick people into thinking they're buying the real thing when they're not if you're selling reps say you're selling a rep but don't trick people I think that's fucking disgusting personally in my opinion but again what do I know